I'm going to introduce uh, one of the presenters who will present the, uh, the first award. Uh, I've gotten to know Betty Oliveira quite well over the last several years uh, since her nephew, Victor, was killed at a railroad crossing. She inspires uh, not only me, but the entire DuPage Railroad Safety Council with her, her passion. Uh, the next, uh, uh, the first award or the next award after uh, Administrator Batori's will be presented by my friend and colleague and, and fellow uh, board of, uh, member of the DuPage Railroad Safety Council. So Betty Oliveira, um, are you available? I am available. There you Thank are. You, Lanny. You're Thank welcome. you, Lanny. It's my privilege to present an award to my colleague, Paul Pekarski. I don't remember, I've been on the DuPage Railroad Safety Council for 16 years, and I don't remember a time that Paul wasn't involved. <clears throat> Paul um, recently retired from his position with the General Assembly. And we, we are fortunate to have a lovely resolution that gives me lots of the information about Paul that um, qualifies him for receipt of this award. Nice to see you, Paul. Paul first became a member of the Brotherhood of Locomotive Engineers and Trailmen in, trainmen in 1974, became president of that division in 1989, and worked his way up the ranks to become chairman of the Brotherhood State Legislative Board in 2010. Paul served in that capacity until his retirement this year. In, in 2014, he was elected as a national alternate legislative vice president for the Brotherhood. And in 2019, the capstone to his career was his successful work to pass legislation in the Illinois General Assembly requiring a two-person crew on locomotives, which you know, furthers our, our cause of rail safety. So in recognition of all of these achievements and his warm friendship and his support for our very important causes, I would like to present the Victor Oliveira Success Award to Paul Pekarski. And we have the award, a picture of the award on the screen. And I hope Paul has that. There it is. Thank you, Paul, for all your service and contributions to our council. Paul, you're muted. There we go. Can you hear me now? Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Betty. And thank you to all on the DuPage Rail Safety Council Board. I mean, I am honored and humbled to receive this. I, I didn't expect this. And, you know, one day the phone rang and uh, Lanny was on the other end and he told me that I would become the recipient of this award, the Victor Oliveira Award. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, I have to tell you one thing though, right, right, right from the start here. Um, I'm not used to this new norm. You know, here I retired in February, not expecting the pandemic to come about and had no knowledge of it or very little that, uh, and uh, thrown into this virtual world, I'm not used to this. This is my first Zoom meeting. And uh, I, uh, it's it just, uh, just like, wow. And I, I'm the person that likes to be with people and I miss everybody so much, you know, missing the, just, being with everyone and uh, across the table at the meetings and uh, the donuts, the Dunkin' Donuts coffee and, and, and that, but uh, hopefully someday we'll be able to reconnect uh, uh, together being in person. Uh, and hopefully that I'll still be part of the DuPage Rail Safety Council. I may have retired from the, my career with the railroad and the rail union, but I still feel it's part of me the, um, the goal to the zero, to have zero fatalities uh, anywhere on the rail, rail property. Because, you know, when I started on a railroad, it was our first, uh, the, the first, in, any, in all our rule books, it always said, you know, safety is the utmost important. And I built off of that. And uh, even with my career, 
representing the 2000 engineers in Illinois on the safety aspect uh, and across the nation, uh, 58,000 uh, locomotive engineers. And again, I, I, I thank you so much. This, this means a lot. Uh, appreciate it. And um, I hope, Lanny, uh, that I can still be part of the, uh, the council. So thank you. Well done. You certainly can be a part of the council. You, you always are. You're a lifetime member, Paul. So, and, and one of these days, I'd like to go out on that sailboat if, you, yes. if we can okay. get back together again. <laughs> well, I have some more time now. Uh, so yes, okay, very good. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Betty, for presenting. Any final thoughts from your part of the world, Betty? Or are you all set? Um, no further thoughts. I'm here from my home office, which is the center of my universe. So multitasking <laughs> and uh, continuing my work with the council. Uh, we're so happy that you are, Betty. Betty, as I mentioned to the group, you are one of our board members. And um, as an attorney, we, we need you. Uh, as an obstetrician gynecologist, which is my profession, that's not needed quite so, so much on the DuPage Railroad Safety Council board, but your profession in law helps keep us straight. So thank you, Betty, uh, and thank you, Paul. Time now to switch to our, our next award. And I'm gonna to look to my friend, uh, Dick Goers. Uh, Dick uh, was one of the inspirers for uh, the DuPage Railroad Safety Council. His son, Jonathan, was struck at the quiet little crossing in Hinsdale a couple of years before Lauren was killed there. Uh, Jonathan and his family fought a long, hard battle, uh, Dick, uh, but uh, uh, he uh, died of his injuries finally uh, just a couple of years ago. Uh, Dick, thank you for being here. And uh, you know uh, a little bit about our friend Rod and, and I appreciate your uh, being willing to put Jonathan's name on Rod Craig's award. Well, thank you for arranging that. And thanks to all of you participants in the program this morning, very inspiring. You've met uh, Rodney Craig because he was a moderator of the first panel. Um, I not sure you picked it up, but he's the mayor of a close in suburb, uh, has been for a number of years. And what I liked about him or noticed about him is that he has a systems orientation and Dr. Foreman also mentioned systems. Um, so if we can apply that systems uh, view uh, to the railroad industry, maybe we can make some progress. The other thing about uh, Rodney that I noticed from his bio is that there is a bewildering number of <laughs> efforts and organizations he's been involved with that, that deal with uh, people of one uh, kind or another, uh, including children. So he's very interested in people, uh, outgoing guy. And so we're uh, thrilled to have him at our Railroad Safety uh, Council meetings. And we'd uh, like to present him with the Jonathan Gores Award. So uh, thank you, Rodney. <clears throat> Trying to, all of a sudden my phone went off here. Sorry, uh, can everyone hear, can you hear me? I, I get these mute notices, but I assume uh, you can all hear me. Um, it was nice, uh, the Jonathan Goes Award is, is quite a privilege and recognition. I'm really appreciative. Uh, Lanny uh, clued me in, and uh, you know I'm I'm a humble guy. I I, I don't like um, um, sticking my head out of the hole, so to speak. I like in, being in the supportive role. Uh, try to share knowledge. Uh, try to share what others are doing, and bring you know facilitate all good things. So if you ask me what I do. That's my role, try to facilitate all good things. So this acknowledgement is uh, quite honorable to receive. And I do appreciate uh, having the Jonathan Goes Award. Uh, and I just uh, am so pleased to work with the 
uh, DuPage Railway Safety Council, because those that come to that meeting have so much to offer, so much knowledge to share. I, I feel like I go home and, and I'm totally refreshed because uh, it meets my it meets my personal uh, goals and observations. And I'll never forget that one meeting when we heard about uh, River Forest. I, it was raining out. It didn't matter. I went straight there. I had to, had to observe that site because it's just one of those things. So I want to thank thank everyone for acknowledging uh, my ability to facilitate effectively, ineffectively, or whatever. But I I do uh, appreciate the recognition. I've got the plaque last week. I have it sitting in my office on the wall, and that's. Uh, might be scary to me to see those kind of things. But thank you. Thank you all very much. And I look forward uh, to seeing Paul Pekarski show up at our meetings again. Have a, have a nice day. Well done, Dick Goers. Well done, Rod Craig. Thank you for uh, helping finish that part of the meeting. Uh, Dick Goers and I go to church together. So we uh, we go way back and way forward. Uh, it's that time of the uh, morning, friends, when we are uh, going to close our conference. It's hard to believe that uh, these almost four hours have gone so quickly. Uh, the DuPage Railroad Safety Council spends about two years preparing for these conferences. Uh, usually they're in person at a nice hotel, usually here in Oak Brook. But uh, this virtual conference um, w scared me uh, to try to figure out how to, to pull it off. And my daughter-in-law is the director of the show. Ashley Wilson has, uh, has really made this possible for us today, friends. Her organization, uh, comparing what we're doing to uh, being on a stage, uh, the run of the run of show that she put together where every minute was accounted for. Uh, Ashley, uh, you are incredible. I love you and thank you for making this virtual live conference happen. The choice of speakers uh, was just wonderful. We have uh, friends around the country. Uh, I received an email from uh, uh, one of the friends I met in uh, Finland when I was over there for a conference a few years ago. So we talk about the DuPage Railroad Safety Council uh, being international and, uh, and that was proven through this conference. Uh, don't let the, the, our title fool you, friends. DuPage Railroad Safety Council started here in DuPage County as the DuPage County Railroad Safety Task Force. But years ago, we realized that our work uh, was far beyond DuPage County. Um, and so some people asked, well, maybe we should be the Illinois Railroad Safety Council. Uh, but in honor of where we started in DuPage, we've kept the name DuPage, but we consider ourselves not just DuPage or even Illinois. We'd like to think that our work has national and international implications. I want to thank uh, a lot of folks today, and I won't take up the whole next 15 minutes. Uh, when I finish, by the way, there'll be a little music and uh, opportunities for question and answers. I'd like for our panelists to continue answering those questions uh, individually, if, if you could. That way, uh, possibly by 12 noon, all of the questions out there will be answered and we won't have to worry about finding people uh, to email the answers at a future time. I'd like to thank the audience. The DRSC meets monthly to be railroad safety advocates, but every two years, we want to share what we dream about and what we have learned with a larger audience. You, the audience, are our railroad safety partners. You are the ones that make this happen. Uh, I've said that, we're, that the DRSC is kind of like the great colors of Benetton. We don't, they don't make the colors, they just make them brighter. We don't do all this safety stuff. We just, we're the cheerleaders for all of you out there who are doing it. 
and hopefully by bringing some of these ideas together, sharing best practices, as one of our DRSC members encouraged, Bob Johnston um, is uh, a writer for Railroad Magazine. Bob, uh, I apologize to you once again for not just calling this um, best practices or conversations about best practices, but we wanted this uh, to, to have heart in it. And the speakers, every step along the way showed it from the um, that first panel where uh, Rod's group uh, were talking about what was happening in the villages and, um, and st the stories about where one by one we can make a difference. I wanna thank Steve Laffey. Steve Laffey has been with the DRSC for, for literally uh, almost the beginning. And Steve's trustworthiness in bringing legitimate information is what we depend on. Steve is, um, is our record keeper, our, our uh, minutes keeper during our meetings. And we couldn't be what we are without Steve Laffey. Uh, several people addressed his uh, graphs uh, throughout their speeches with good reason. Steve Laffey is known throughout the country and we are better because he's with us. Our panelists, um, panel moderators, Rod, Scott, and Mike, uh, you organized your panels and such a marvelous job sharing those messages. Uh, the panelists themselves, the speakers, were prepared, knowledgeable, and inspiring. Let's take those best practices they shared and find ways to put them into practice. Administrator Batori, most important railroad safety official in the country, graced us with his presence. What a gift he is. And he's a great listener. And when he says he's going to do something, he does it. And there's been a sea change during his time as administrator from just looking at crossings as the problem to the crossings and the railroad tracks in between the crossings, realizing that today, as was stated earlier, that about 80% of the deaths that are occurring uh, on railroad property are related to trespasser and suicide issues. We were uh, blessed with the speakers who, who uh, are addressing these railroad trespasser suicide issues and are not just saying as people were saying when I first, when Lauren died, um, gosh, it's been uh, 26 years now, you can't do anything about the trespasser suicide issues. Let's just focus on the things we can do something about. And yes, the railroad crossings have become safer and safer, but now we really must address more and more of the trespasser suicide issues and uh, Administrator Batori is helping us do that. The DuPage Railroad Safety Council and our board have spent the last two years, as I said, preparing for today. I look forward to the next time that we can gather like this and we'll be, uh, we'll be, uh, we'll be debriefing at our next meeting. We get together the third Saturday of every month. You can count on the DuPage Railroad Safety Council getting together. We'll be talking about this meeting and starting to prepare for our 2022 conference. For those of you who'd like to have copies of uh, our conference today. Uh, they will be posted on our website. That's www.dupagerailsafety.org. Our DRSC communications, Debbie Hare, um, is in fact posting um, as we speak on the Q&A portion uh, where you can link in to find our website and our YouTube channel. Uh, we will be sending out the entire uh, conference because Ashley's been videoing that. It's the, I see the little recording button, button flashing red as I speak. So this entire conference will be uh, put out there for you, but it will be broken down into segments so you don't have to watch the whole conference to see the segment that you're interested in, whether you want to focus on the government leaders trials, tribulations, hopes and aspirations, or trespasser prevention, what's working on commuter rail, or strategies for eliminating rail-related suicides. Um, so um, it will be out there on the website. You can find it. Uh, and Debbie Hare, our DRSC communications, is putting that in the Q&A. 
Um, we have 10 minutes to spare. I'm going to ask if any of our panelists um, would like to add anything that I've left out. Um, Rod, are you still out there? Uh, anything, last words from Rod Craig? I'm gonna go through each of the panel moderators and ask if you have anything more you'd like to add. Well, Lanny, uh, if you ask me the question, I'm usually kind of bashful about responding. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> Never worry about being bashful, Rod. <laughs> I'm, I'm really excited about uh, what we had the opportunity to pull together today with the, with the uh, local government officials. Um, I know uh, it's, we're hopeful that we can figure out how to get a pathway for mayors and, and local government officials to uh, work um, when they see trespassing, when they see events that are occurring, when things happen in their community that impact uh, families. And you know, uh, I'm the family guy, right? <laughs> For sure. Mike, I believe that we build community with our families and people come from everywhere. They have different different thoughts and, and uh, what they bring to the table, but everyone is welcome at the table. We have to figure out when uh, something occurs. Um, you know, in our, in our community, you've heard me say this story before. Um, a young man decided to uh, take his life. Rod, I'm yeah. glad you're gonna tell this story. I was gonna ask you to tell the story. So this is great. Oh, Th thank oh, you for okay, doing this. Okay. This I, I thought you were gonna shut me down. <laughs> no, no, this is this is great. I wanted you to, to tell the story. This is good. So so the young man, uh, it, it moved me like I like when I when the ladies came from uh, River Grove. So River Forest. Um, I went over in the neighborhood and I found the, the young men from the street where he lived, and I said to them, they're playing basketball. And I said to him, did you, did you know the young man? And I gave him his name that uh, took his life. And they go, yeah, yeah, he, he was a good guy. He, you know, he's a friend of ours. Uh, we miss him, and, you know, but it didn't slow down their basketball game. And, and I said to him, well, what do you think happened? Well, his girlfriend kind of blew him off and he just took it personally. And, you know, I looked at that and I, and I thought, my goodness, there's got to be a way we can get inside our schools, our education system to try to help young people find a solution other than taking their life. And so that was, that was quite a story. It was quite moving. And, uh, you know, now I look, I look at things a little differently that way. I think uh, many solutions, I believe in education and, uh, our, our, uh, what we do with with Metra and our, you know, you showed some of the signs from the schools. We need to continue that. We need to be inside the education process so young people understand there are alternatives to taking your life and that losing a girlfriend or whatever those emotions are. Um, we have to tre we treasure, treasure life and not take it so... Um, uh, so lightly that someone has just died. We got to stop and take time and, and honor that life. Uh, and life is precious. And, amen, uh, brother. Yeah, good. Well, thank uh, you. Thank, thank you, partner. Uh, April Foreman said that uh, uh, there's a kind of that 30 minute window. Uh, if you can kind of get people through that uh, time frame, then you can save a life. So we've got to get that message I heard out that. there. Yeah. I heard that. It got my attention. I yeah. sent her a note and I sent her my email. I said, we got to connect. I need to understand that vitality that she brings yeah. to what I call the alternative to taking your life. I really wanted somebody from the, the, Associate, the American Association of Suicidology with us to kind of bring a little different perspective. So she did not disappoint, did she? No, big time. Beautiful. Uh, I'd like to see if Scott Gabri is still out there. Scott, uh, any uh, final words? We also uh, have Ron Batori who just joined. I don't know if you can see his video feed, but the audience certainly can. So he's- Oh, really? Wonderful. Well, 
fantastic. Uh, Ron, w welcome back. Um, so uh, w uh, we're just kind of doing some concluding remarks and I just got finished bragging on you, Ron. I don't know if you heard any of that, but um, I can, well, you're nice and casual there. You don't have yeah, your time. <laughs> I'm nice, nice and casual. I hope, can you hear me? Yeah, we sure can. Well, great. great. We have connectivity and I can actually hear myself talk. <laughs> uh, I apologize earlier, but you know, I'm, I'm one of those people that I never give up. So I continued to try to get in and I found a place where I could get in and I've listened to the presentations. They were excellent. And Lanny, I just wanted to personally express to you and all your fellow colleagues that took the time to put this together, job well done. And thank you very much. You're a good man, Ron. Thank you so much. You know, um, we throughout the years we've been doing this since 1996 so we've put on several conferences along the way and we've been blown off by a couple of people um but but i knew that ron Batori would not <laughs> your sin, your sincerity is rich and you're yeah. uh, and we really appreciate you being with us well regardless of where my past may take me i'll stay i you have my commitment i will stay involved that that is wonderful thank you so much Scott, is Scott Gabri still still out there? Scott, is any concluding remarks there from your angle? Um, I, I don't think anything uh, earth shattering. It was a, a phenomenal conference for for me to attend too. I think that uh, I, as I have come to expect, when uh, you host a conference, I will walk away knowing a heck of a lot more than I knew coming into it. So um, it's always a pleasure to be a part of this, and I'm excited to. Uh, use this as kind of another another point to, to continue that process. And I'm glad Star Kid had an opportunity today to talk about the, the US-based um, commuter rail kind of focused group that we're hoping to pull together that I think, I think the hope of something like that is that we can take some of the lessons that, that these, these groups pull together and take that and try to make sure that those things are getting into the hands of folks who can um, put them into practice. So. Um, again, a, a kind of a, a step along the way towards, I think, hopefully making some, um, some, some progress on this issue. But again, a thank you to you, a big old thank you to Ashley for her organizing uh, and, and running an incredibly smooth virtual conference, which is a feat. So it is um, a feat, isn't it? Yeah. It's phenomenal. So, Th thank you, yeah. Scott. I'm going to let Mike Griskevich, I have to use, uh, I've been practicing your last name, Mike. So I'm going to let you have the final word here. No, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Wilson. And you did perfect with my name. I know, know you <laughs> working on that and we've exchanged a few emails, but uh, really um, under the leadership of Administrator Botori, one thing that the FRA is trying to do a better job of is communications. And one thing that your conference has done, your summit, your team has done, has uh, provided us with a platform to share the wonderful things that the FRA has created and get out in the public and see it uh, be put into action. Um, so on behalf of the FRA, the Highway Rail Grade Crossing and Trespass Prevention Team, the research and development teams that focus on this area, we want to thank you and your team for hosting an excellent uh, summit. Um, I'll be honest with you, I had reservations about we're gonna do a virtual thing for half a day, let's see how it goes. Um, I'm gonna be honest, everybody here will hear it. I will be ripping off and replicating this. Uh, <laughs> if you've heard me, I will be bringing uh, an informational series on the road um, and we will use this platform. Um, you've clearly, you and your team have worked hard. Um, for those that don't know it on an average basis, there must be three dozen emails that cross coming from uh, Dr. Wilson to ensure that this event ran smoothly as hard work paid off. So. Congratulations to you and your team. And to everyone else out there, um, us at the Federal Railroad Administration, we are one of those federal agencies that is truly here to help. So please reach out to myself, any one of our teammates, Star Kidder, Dr. Gabri, any one of us are, are here to help you. We will provide you any information that we uh, have. We also have uh, roughly 40 field specialists that are dedicated to highway rail grade crossing and trespass prevention uh, um, outreach efforts. So um, in your particular area, we have Dale and Tina um, that are um, wonderful partners. So please um, reach out to us, let us know how we can help. And thank you again, Dr. Wilson, for allowing us to be part of your event. Thank you. Our pleasure. That's the final word. 
Be well and safe, everyone. Keep in touch.